Hey guys, thanks so much for tuning in with me, Laura Ventura. Today I have Toby here. He does not like his nails clipped, but I really want to show you guys how I do his haircut because it is super cute. Now, if you know anything about Shih Tzus, they have really big personalities, even though they are very little dogs. And look at that little face. I love that little face. Sorry guys, my tag was out from my smock. I didn't realize it, but yeah, let's get into the bath. If I turn around, I'm just making sure you guys are still with me. Now it is getting cold here in Orlando, Florida, so I do put my water heater on, and I don't really do this in the summertime because I don't need to, but the water heater really works in these vans. So I'm just switching it over uh, to off, and then I'm kind of putting it to the cooler side. Now I am gonna bathe him with Smith & Burton Soothing Shampoo and I'm not gonna dilute the shampoo, I'm just gonna put it straight on him and I'm gonna make sure again that that shampoo is getting to the root. I'm making sure that his paws are really getting smothered in that shampoo and also his butt, his face, and his entire body. Guys, I think I say this in each and every one of my videos. If your prep work is not up to par, your haircut would never look as good as it can. So before I start blow drying him, I am gonna brush him out and I'm gonna make sure that he has no mats. Now, if you are going to leave mats in a dog's coat, you have to go ahead and be prepared to fluff dry and take those mats out as you dry because if not, it's never gonna dry correctly. Now there are different type of dryer heads and there is one that is longer and narrower. Now I'm using the flat one on him because he is a small dog and I just don't want the air to be too forceful for his little body. Toby turned around like this suddenly because he wanted to see what was going on outside. These dogs are so nosy. They want to know everything that's happening around them. It's really cute. Now he is very ticklish. So that's why he's bending his body that way because the dryer tickles him. And so does the clippers as you guys will see now. Before moving on to drying the face, I want to make sure that the body is completely dry. And here I am disassociating myself. <laughs> while I'm drying. I don't know if other groomers do that too, but I go into my own little realm. Notice that as I'm drying, I'm also brushing his tail out because his tail tends to um, just get really wavy and curly and I wanna make sure that it dries straight. So this is a really good technique that if you dry and brush at the same time, this will ensure that everything brushes out straight. It's almost like blow drying your hair. All right guys, I am gonna start with his sanitary trim. Now I'm using a 15 blade on my Brevera clippers. I always start off with my sanitary trim and it's really good if you are a baby groomer to get into a routine so you're making sure that you don't miss anything. Now part of that sanitary trim is the paws and then I'll go ahead and do his butt. All right, after I have prepped him, I'm gonna take my one comb and I'm gonna place that on top of a number 40 blade on my Wall Bavera, which is a five in one blade. I'm gonna take my Chris Christensen comb, which is the father of all combs. This is an amazing comb. If you haven't gotten it, literally, this is what I use now all the time. I don't use any other comb except the half moon one. Now, remember when I told you that he's ticklish, that's why he's going to start bending his body and kind of wanting to scratch because this just tickles him, that's all it is. Now, when I'm passing the comb throughout any dog's body, I keep my comb around me because if I have to brush anything out, I will. What you wanna concentrate on is getting a very even cut. And to do this, you just have to make sure that no hair or fur is getting caught in the blade underneath your comb guard. Now I am going to leave Toby's legs a little longer because I want to make them look pretty flowy and his body pretty tight. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to skim his legs with the one comb. I'm not going to go all the way down and I'm not going to press too hard. I'm just going to skim it. So all I have to do is scissor and shape it.
All right, guys, then I'm gonna take my curved from Chris Christensen, and unfortunately, they discontinued these shears. They do have other shears that are very similar, but the curve is a lot curvier than these. I don't know why they're making shears now with the curve so exaggerated. I wish they didn't discontinue these scissors because this is my second pair of these. I am gonna have to find other ones that are very similar, but anyways, I'll link the ones that are kind of like these, but more curved in the link below. So what I'm doing now, after I blended his leg with the comb attachment, I'm just tightening everything up and shaping everything how I want it with my shears. Now I first take off length and I sculpt everything with my shears and then I go in with my thinning shears and I blend all the hard lines and I make sure everything looks nice and flowy. Essentially what grooming is, is creating shapes with your scissors and your shears and making them look very neat. So if you could see the back of his leg, I'm creating like a backward S shape. It's not a straight line, okay? And I'm making sure that also in between his legs is very just neat and tight because when they walk, his tail is going to be up and if there are little hairs coming out in between his legs, the haircut is not gonna look as neat as possible. Now notice how I flipped my shears and I'm letting that backward curve work for me. This is something that could take a little bit of practice to learn, but once you get the hang of it, it's really cool because your equipment is literally going to be working with you and for you instead of you working against it. So what I always tell people that I'm teaching, make sure that your shears and that curve is working for you and making your life easier so if you got to flip the scissors put them backwards do it um, it just depends the shape that you're trying to create all right now for his tail I am NOT gonna flag it his tail is nice and fluffy I'm just gonna leave it that way I'm just gonna take off length from the bottom so when he walks it's at least maybe an inch from the floor now when I'm trimming anything, the comb is going to be my truth teller. It is gonna be my best friend. It's going to tell you if you're gonna cut evenly. So always have it by you. All right guys, there are four parts to a dog's leg, the front, the back, and the two sides. So all of those four sides have to be accounted for and plus you got the paw. So the first thing I do is I trim and scissor the paw very neatly. I make sure that the toenails are not showing. And to do this, you have to make sure that you're doing the nails before the haircut. Then I usually start with the inside of the leg and then I work my way to the back and then I do the outer side. And then last but not least, I do the front. Now I leave the front full because if you take too much length from the front, your leg is going to look like an L. I am starting with his other front leg. Now notice how I start with the paws, like I said before. I'm making sure that I am not exposing that toenail and the paw is itself is a circle. So you have to account for the back of the circle, the front and the sides of the circle and you have to make sure that it all comes together. Now I'm going to start on his leg and I want you guys to see how I hold his leg from the upper half. Now this is what I do when I'm working on the full leg. I just make sure that I'm angling myself correctly and I'm holding on to the upper half so I have room to go ahead and scissor what I need to scissor. When I do this type of haircut, I think about the front legs as a Christmas tree so it goes very narrow on top and then it flares outwards. Let's start his face. Now I'm going to take my little guy thinning shears and I'm going to go ahead and take off all the hair in between his eyes. Now I don't take a 10 or a 15 blade to dog's eyes because usually it just leaves a mark and I like it to look natural when they have their eyes scooped out. So I always use small thinning shears. You do have to be very careful around this area. It is a very sensitive area and angulation of your shears is everything. So 
If you are a baby groomer or a pet parent, please, please don't try this by yourself. I've heard a lot of horror stories from pet parents just trying to take the little hairs in between the eyes out and unfortunately they nick the side of their eye. So just be really careful with this area and if you need somebody next to you that's a professional while you do it, don't feel bad, it is uh, pretty tricky. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and shorten up his visor. Now, Toby does come into Paws and All for a trim every other week. I do do a bath and then a haircut in the other session, but when I do a bath, I always clean up his sanitary and I always clean in between his eyes and his visor. So we're just gonna shorten it a little bit more so it's not in front of his eye. Also, I'm going to separate with my ends of my shears, his eyelashes and his visor. If you guys do this, even if the eyelashes are short, this is a really good touch because when you could see the difference between the visor and the eyelash, I don't know, it just looks so cute because it accentuates their eyes. Here, me and Toby took a little break because I did have a new client wanting information about Posenol and I want you guys to see like how relaxed the environment is he will definitely just lay there and just wait until i'm done patiently and i love that that's something that i didn't have in a busy grooming salon so mobile is awesome for the fact that like it's just quiet and it's just a calm environment that the dogs are also very much calmer Because I touched up his visor two weeks ago, he didn't have that much length to take off, so I went ahead and just grabbed my small thinning shears. Usually I, again, take off length with my curves because it's faster, but this time I just went ahead and started blending right off the bat. For his ears, I am going to go ahead and take my curves. You could take your straights. Now, I do do his ears pretty short, and then I trim around the leather, and I make sure that that is very nice, neat, and tight, because if you have little hairs coming out of the ears, it's just not a good look, especially if they're meant to be short and pretty much shaved. I did go back to his face just to touch it up and blend it a little bit more. Look how cute he is. So I'm just going to keep doing this until I am happy with it. And then I'm going to go ahead and take my chunkers and go throughout his legs and his whole body with it. All right, guys, now we're gonna do some finishing work and this is just wrapping up the groom. Uh, notice how I took out my chunkers for his body and his legs. You do not want to use the small thinning shears that I used on his face throughout the body and the legs because you are going to take forever. So these are longer and these are stronger and that's why I'm doing it. While you're doing your finishing work, you're just concentrated on getting any of the little hairs that you didn't get with the comb guard or your scissors. So this is gonna be your last chance to perfect it and to make everything really neat. So don't skip this part because it makes all the difference. Toby's face is extremely expressive and he could be a cranky little old man, but every time I pull up, he jumps in that van because he already knows what time it is. We always have fun in here and I always make sure to give him treats at the end because look how good he is for the whole process. Cute boy Toby is all done. Now we're gonna grab him either a bow tie or a bandana. We're gonna put some serum on him and uh, we're gonna spritz a little bit of cologne and we're going to take him back home.
Now, most of my doggy clients do this. They look in the bin where I have the bandanas and bow ties and um, they're just nosy. They're so funny. All right, guys, the serum that I use is Silky Spirits by Chris Christensen. It is the best. It also has a little bit of fragrance and this is our Tarot Flash, one of my favorites. Uh, this is going to give them a light scent and is also going to give them shine. Here is the bow tie that we picked out. <laughs> he looks so cute. This was back in October, so it was perfect for Halloween and that's why I picked it out. This is Toby's sister Chanel. They do check in with each other from time to time, especially when they are done. I'm gonna get her ready, and while I get her ready, Toby is just gonna wait patiently. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. It is my pleasure to share this with you. Up and out, love and light, Laura Ventura and Toby.